Hi, welcome back to this final episode in this series. Um, what are we covering today, Isaac? We'll be talking about ZTNA, right? That's Zero Trust Network Access. Impressive, that's correct. And, um, and yeah, everything that we've been speaking about up till now is kind of heading up to this, right? Preparing our sellers, preparing our, our, um, our, our folk and partners to understand ZTNA and to have those conversations with customers. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be, um, it's not going to be that long, but uh, I would definitely stay tuned if I were you. Amazing. Let's head to the studio. Yeah, let's do it. So what does a good security program look like? I thought about it and how I could describe this in the best way possible. And of course, I have a diagram to do it. But an onion? An onion is so much better. Yes, you heard that correctly, an onion. Let me show you what I mean. This is what a CISO has for breakfast every morning. So here we go, we, uh, we've chopped up our onion and let's look at this diagram in a little bit more detail. If you look up at the top, you'll see regulations. We've, we've covered these regulations that are enforced on organizations, laws that might be enforced on organizations. Um, this is all in the strategic you know, management layer, the outside layer, governance model, policy development, security program, a lot of these topics we've covered, some of them we haven't, but imagine being responsible and overseeing all of this just to have a good security model. What about uh, on, on the, uh, the, uh, the internal one, the tactical management layer, risk analysis, personnel security, auditing, uh, development of matrix, looking at common threads, there's an enormous amount. Now, will this all be done by one specific person? No, almost certainly never. Either you bring in consulting companies to help you with this, or you have a team of people, if the company is large enough, that needs to, uh, that needs to manage this. As we get one layer in the operational management, you start to be concerned about with network security, physical security, uh, um, communication security, we covered some of those right in, in episode one. System lifecycle security. Devices should have a birth date and a death date. They shouldn't be, you know, you shouldn't have devices on your network that can no longer be updated. You shouldn't have devices on your network for which the companies have gone out of business and there are no security updates or any patches for that. Those lifecycle management is really important. What about vulnerability and threat management, policy compliance? Lots of these things, all of them to protect that inner layer, the company assets, which we've also spoken about and say, you know, depending on the business, those could be anything. It could be, you know, business records. It'd be, it could be contracts with sportsmen or movie stars. It could be inventions, intellectual property. The job of a CSO or a CISO, a CISO is not an easy one. That's why we say responsibility for security is not a single person. All of us have to be our, have to do our bit to make sure that we have secure company networks. By the way, the term CISO stands for Chief Information and Security Officer, someone you should be friendly with. So this diagram, this, this onion, um, it's not very pretty, is it? No, it isn't because you can see that securing a network is a complex task because there are so many layers that need to be wrapped around your core in order to protect it. This is why we say speeds and feeds might be interesting to a network engineer, but it doesn't keep them up at night. This stuff keeps a CISO up at night. Simplifying this complexity is what just about every security company in the world is trying to do because they understand that if you can streamline and bring efficiency into these disparate systems, you're on a win. Complexity is hard. 
the stuff that needs to be done on a daily basis is hard. And it often consumes the time and the energy of those involved to the point where they don't even have time to properly plan for the future and the expansion of their networks or even allow their company to grow their vision at the speed that they should. It holds them back. So complexity doesn't make things any easier. Anything that you can do, any tool that you can do that makes any of these um, on screen, any of these elements simpler, that is always going to be uh, a CISO win. That's always going to get the, the ear of a CISO. Now, one big topic I thought about bringing into this episode was the topic of SASE or, or, or SSE. And even though I was tempted, we're already done. We've already done a very good job of explaining what SASE is in the Welcome series on SD-WAN episodes. Uh, I think it was episode one and two. So I really encourage you to go watch those two episodes uh, delivered by my good mate, David Stook. Not now, not now. Stay tuned to this episode first. Let this episode finish. You can go and watch it later on. So now let's talk a little bit about ZTNA, or as we say in South Africa, ZTNA. What is it and why does it matter? By the way, here I'm referring to ZTNA as a generic term and not to universal ZTNA that Extreme Network sells and which we will touch on towards the end, right? It's very similar, but this is the generic version. At its most basic, ZTNA stands for Zero Trust Network Access. It's not a product, but an approach to network security. Let me try and explain it with a story we can all relate to. Remote work means a lot of us don't go into the office every day of the week. So it's not unusual that when you do go, you see faces, new faces. Human behavior means, unless you're a really outgoing and bubbly person, you assume that those new faces are employees and that they are there legit. We don't challenge people. Actually, it feels a little bit embarrassing to challenge them. But how do you know they're legit if you don't challenge or ask? And let me just say, look, I, I don't mean to imply that no one asks or challenges. I just mean that it's not generally something that you would do, especially when you work for a company with more than 10 or 20 employees, right? You work with a company, hundreds of employees, it's very different. ZTNA, it doesn't care. ZTNA says, I never trust, I always challenge. It's not, a, it's not afraid of offending anyone. So here are some key principles of ZTNA. Number one, verify every user and every device. ZTNA requires continuous authentication and authorization for every access request. And this ensures that only legitimate users and devices can access specific resources within that company network. Even if a user is within the network, they must prove the identity each time they attempt to access a resource. A lot of this is running in the background, right? You're not having to log in 20 times a day. It's you log in, but the ZTNA is constantly checking whenever you need to access a resource. The next principle is least privilege access. Users are only granted the minimum level of access necessary to perform their tasks. ZTNA ensures that access is limited to specific resources based on the user's role, right? And it does not provide broad access to the entire network. You do not get that type of access. The third principle is context-based access. ZTNA considers various uh, contextual factors when granting access. For example, it might consider where are you coming from? What's your location? Uh, device health, time of access. And when I say device health, you know, does it have the latest patches, the latest security updates? The time of access and the sensitivity of the, re the requested resource. Access may be denied 
or even limited if the context is unusual or deemed necessary. The fourth is microsegmentation. ZTNA often involves microsegmentation, and that is where the system divides the network into smaller segments and then controls access to each of those segments individually. And this prevents lateral movement across the network, meaning even if an attacker compromises one segment, they can't easily move to the others. They are hedged in. Principle number five is continual monitoring and verification. ZTNA continuously monitors and verifies uh, access requests, even after a user has been authenticated. If there's any sign of unusual behavior or a security threat, the system can revoke access in real time. That is powerful, and that is what makes it very attractive for those people who eat onions for breakfast, for CISOs. It starts to take care of some of those boxes on our onion diagram, and it starts to reduce complexity. So now we understand the key principles. How does it actually work? Well, I've got a four process. I know it's another four steps, but let's just stay with me. These are really easy and they're really short as well. Step number one, a user or device requests access to an application or resource, right? Step number two, ZTNA verifies the user's identity using things such as multi-factor authentication. And then it checks the context, uh, device health, location, et cetera, to assess the risk. Number three, based on the identity, the role, the context, ZTNA then grants access only to the specific resources the user is allowed to access. And it applies the principle of least privilege. And then even after access is granted, ZTNA continues to monitor user activity and access patterns. If something unusual is detected, access can be modified or revoked in real time. So if you remember nothing else about ZTNA of what I've said, try and remember that order that I've just mentioned, those four steps of what actually happens in the background when you're using ZTNA. If you remember that, you would have done really well. Okay, so I hear you say, oh, but we have VPN. VPN takes care of that. Well, mm, traditional VPN grants users broad access to the entire network once they authenticate. By doing this, it creates a higher risk if those credentials are compromised. ZTNA doesn't, it's limited. Pre-COVID, when everybody came to the office to work, you might have had a few people working from home at any one time. So in terms of load on the network infrastructure, having a couple of VPN tunnels wasn't a big deal. It's a big deal now because VPNs generally struggle with performance issues as more and more users access remote systems. Of course, if you throw tons of money at the problem, these performance issues can be overcome. But it would be nice if you didn't need to spend tons of money to achieve that. It would be great if these systems were cheap to purchase, simple to install, and a piece of cake to run. Now, ZTNA is also more granular and secure than VPNs, as it only grants access to specific resources based on the user's identity. And access is continuously verified. ZTNA is better suited for cloud-based world and remote work environments where traditional VPNs fall a little bit short. In these episodes up till now, we wanted to lay the groundwork for a really good understanding of the security landscape, terminology, concepts, principles, frameworks, etc. And we wanted to show the complexity that CSOs and CISOs and similar roles have to deal with every day to stay afloat. But we don't want them just to stay afloat. We want them to win. Is there a lot more to learn and understand? Yes, there certainly is. What we're going to do is we're going to cover this uh, in an upcoming No episode, which will be available on YouTube. So if you want to be informed about the release date and learn more, well, subscribe and hit the bell icon on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash extreme networks, or scan this QR code and we'll send you an email 
the minute it's released. Thank you for watching. So that's it. You've watched the whole series, haven't they, Isaac? Yeah, we covered a lot of uh, we covered a lot of material. Hopefully, you found it interesting. Hopefully, you learned a lot about the terminology, about security uh, landscape, and uh, that's almost everything. But don't forget, right at the end of this episode, you can still take those screenshots of a summary of the episode. And if you prefer to get a PDF, well, here's the QR code. Just scan it. It'll set up an email with the correct information. Just hit send, and we'll get that uh, that PDF to you. It's almost done. One more thing. We got an exam to tell you about. Over to Louise. Follow me. So the exam. You need to have registered for a portal account. So scan the QR code on the screen now and register your details. Once you've registered, you can access the Extreme Academy certification training platform. Here you can book all your courses, access the courseware and book your exams. So are you ready to take the exam for this series? Scan the QR code and good luck.